Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the XSW Lab System by Sennheiser. Now, this wireless system has two parts, two main parts, and then has the lavalier microphone that you can add on any one you want. I am using the ME2 by Sennheiser. I also used it in my AVX test, so check that out if you haven't already. Also, a comparison between these two will be coming out soon. So this design is very simple and there are a couple of different versions of this system, but I'm using the 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter, meaning both sides have a 3.5 millimeter jack. I am right now going through the 3.5 millimeter on the receiver to a Rode XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter to the Zoom F6, just so you know. And I will be doing different tests with it going into the camera and making sure that I cover my bases as much as I can. If I do miss something, please let me know down in the comments and I could co cover it in another video or maybe a short, or I could just simply answer it in the comments if that works as well. So for this specific test, I gave a little bit of the layout going into the Zoom F6 through an adapter and XLR uh, using the preamps on the F6. I also have the ME2 right here, which I will cover more in depth in the comparison between the two lab systems because I'm using the same microphone. I have two ME2s. And this specific test is with a magnetic clip that I bought on Amazon or something like that. I think it was on Amazon. Yeah, it's, everyone buys things on Amazon. So this system meaning the magnetic system is something that's new to me. I'm used to alligator, that's not an easy word to say, alligator clips. I'm leaving that in. So I'm used to alligator clips when I use labs, but I'm curious to see of how this thing holds up on just a shoot. So I'm testing it here so that I don't mess up during a real shoot or uh, a client based shoot. I have tried to use it during a client-based shoot, but I end up going back to the alligator one because I don't know this uh, system very well. But regardless of how I have the microphone set up, usually you should keep it like that much distance away, but you try your best to get as close as you can. And like I said, we will be covering this microphone more in depth in the comparison, but this is based on the lab system, the XSW lab system. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the build is very simple. One button on each and a USB-C port on the butt end of it. This is nice because it's just USB-C. Everybody should start adopting USB-C because it's so much better than micro and it just, it works. It really does work every single time. I don't have a problem with it, but I think we're going that way, but it's going to take some time for a lot of other people to adopt it. Now I'm in my little studio here, just a little reference to the microphone and there's not many interfering, interfering things. There is my computer. There is uh, a light, a couple, a bunch of lights. Actually, one is a Bluetooth light going to my phone. I haven't really noticed that much in the interference between the receiver and the transmitter but there could be things that pop up every once in a while that may get in the way. And I'll try my best to give some examples of interference with the signal. And most of my tests will probably be between walls, between different uh, environments. Uh, most of the time, you want to have a direct line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. So if you do that, you probably will be okay. So as far as the XSW system itself. It's a 2.4 gigahertz digital transmission for worldwide operations. That's how it's pronounced. That's how it's said in the manual, just so you know. I'm not trying to be fancy. Uh, it says it has a 75 meter range or 250 feet optimal conditions, meaning direct line of sight. Up to five hours of battery on a single charge. That's both of them, the receiver and the transmitter which is different to the AVX system where the transmitter lasts a lot longer than the receiver. So you got a uh, understanding of it. But the other thing is you can't, re you can't swap batteries. It is all in the same thing. So you got five hours and then you gotta charge it up again. But for most shoots, you're probably gonna be okay. 
All right, so XSW outside, and we literally have the transmitter and the receiver right next to each other, so this is a good reference of it being pretty close to clean as you can. They're literally touching each other right now, so maybe that's something you gotta deal with. So we got the green here, we're matched up, we're paired, we're good to go. I will, at the end of the video, go into the pairing situation of how to do it and everything like that. But right now, we're just doing a test. I'm doing things a little bit different just to, I don't know, mess around and uh, keep things fresh. So, at least for me. If it is confusing for you, there are chapters down below and you can always go to that one. So, now we're going to do a distance test. I'm going to be about 10 feet, 25 40 whatever it is i'm guessing of how much it is i don't think i get much more than like 100 125 feet away and then of course like the avx test we're going to be going into the shed and distance and interference with walls so keep that in mind there is no indicator of how the signal is other than green so if it's not green i'll let you guys know okay so about 10 feet away from the receiver right now transmitting to the receiver and it should be fine. I see a signal there. Backing up a little bit further, we're probably about like 30 feet now away from the receiver. And I think I still see it going up. Yep, it's still going up. Uh, my eyesight's not going just yet. Turning around and going to about, let's say 75 to 100 feet away from the receiver right now. I don't know if it's actually still picking me up. Let's see if it's green. It's still green. So we're still good about 100 feet away or so. I'm not breaking out a ruler for this. So we're in the shed right now, about 125 or so feet away. It's still green, so we'll know in post, and you'll know right now uh, if it's any good or if uh, it's cut out. Oh, there it goes. All right, so what I found out is it had a bit of a cutout there. It turned red, and then it reconnected right away, which I could see the signals back again. So it split out on me for a split second and then uh it just went right back i will know in post how it reacted so is it literally just a skip or is it just a cutout whatever it is uh you guys will know and i might do some post work uh, like in the video or i'll just let you know how it came out most likely i'll just let you know how it came out and uh yeah i'm assuming it just goes dead and then it picks up again and it's probably a little muffled, maybe a little staticky. Uh, obviously, I don't know, but you will. All right, so just a quick test, quick audio test specifically, because I did the distance and all that other stuff. Uh, this is the audio quality outside with the lav system going straight into the Canon 90D. So let me know what you know, what you think, and what you know. What what do you know? What you know, what you think you know, and what you don't think you know what's those things those three things that people say i don't even know i'm just trying to fill in some time of audio sample for you outside crickets all that stuff same as before just with it plugged into the canon 90d so audio quality difference let me know and it's gaff to my chest all right so here's the car test very quick easy thing a little bit of audio quality i got it right here about the hang loose distance from my mouth. I'm in my little Honda Civic right now. Uh, it's an 08 Honda Civic if you're interested in like the audio quality of the car itself. Probably sounds like a car. If everyone knows what a car sounds like when in it, there you go. So the car is on right now. I have my Bluetooth adapter for my phone going as well and it's right next to the receiver and the transmitters right here in my hand. So here's your audio quality. You got a little bit of interference, possible interference, I will say, with the Bluetooth adapter going to my phone, but I can't guarantee one way or another. So we'll see in post if it's actually good. I'm gonna switch to the camera input right now so you can understand like a different audio source and the quality in which it is. See if it's different, see if it's the same, and I'll be right back. All right, so no syncing required. Audio is set up. I have it on the hot shoe right now, uh, the receiver end. The transmitter is still the same with the mic in the same position. And uh, this is what it's going to sound like with the receiver going into the camera itself. So let me know what you think. And this is your audio quality for that. Okay. 
XSW interference test. This is a very minor test. It's not like crazy interference and stuff like that. We're just going to try to do a uh, simple between the walls type test. And of course, if I do miss any different tests, which I will, please let me know down in the comments and we could talk about further tests and more of a uh, dedicated video to interference and see how this transmission of a signal uh, works with different environments, works with different materials. So if it's metal, wood, drywall, whatever it is, I try my best to put that apparatus in between. But right now it's right here. Track one, if it's interesting to you. I have the AVX also set up because I'm testing both of them at the same time. Comparison coming out soon. So the plan is I'm going to put this in the other room like I did in the AVX test. So if you saw the AVX video, this is the same concept. 10 feet away with a masonite wall in between, about 30 feet away with a wooden wall and stairs and stuff like that in the way. And pots and pans too, keep that in mind because they're hanging in the stairwell. And then about like 50 or so feet by the boiler with metal workspace and all stuff like that in the way. So let's do those tests. All right, so like I said in the outer, the outer, the outside tests, the only way I can know if I'm not in line of sight of this, if this is a bad signal, is the green light here. Now, it is still green, 10 feet away, masonite wall on the other side. So there it is to the next test. Okay, back 30 feet away with the wood, all that stuff in the way. And this is what it's going to sound like. We're still green. I don't know how strong that green is, but it's still solid green and not flickering on and off between yellow and green. Okay, by the boiler, about 60 feet away in a case and all that other stuff in the way. There's also a uh, toolbox, tool chest, if you will. And we're still solid green. So for whatever it's worth, and if that helps you, let me know down in the comments. Of course, like I said, there are so many different environments and different situations that I could put this through. So if you let me know something specific, I'll do it. I do plan on doing something, but I would actually have to go and have access to it. But if I get a list of things, then I can go out and just do it rather than just hunting and pecking on things that people might be interested in. All right, so we have the XSW. Yes, I pronounced that very well. Uh, lab system here. And here's the biggest issue I have with it. And this is just my breakdown of setting it up and things like that and the innards. Obviously, USB-C and a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch, depending on where you're from, and a button on the front with a, with a light. Now... My issue with it, if you were just looking at them like this, you wouldn't know which one is which. They have stickers, so you could label them, but you would actually have to remember which is which. The best way to do it is you go to the back, and there is a picture of a microphone, and the thing that I go off of, it says TX right there. That means transmitter. On the opposite side, you have your camera end or RX, receiver. All right, so you got the transmitter and the receiver here. Press the buttons. They will blink. And if they have been paired before, they will be solid. That's paired. Now, turning them off, hold it down, turn yellow. And that's it. Next up, if you want to mute these things, basically, hit it. Hit it once, they both turn yellow. Hit it again, that's it. Now with this one. Hit it once, they both turn yellow. Hit it again, then that. What if I hit one, and then I hit the other? Same thing. Muting works for both. On and off. It's kind of like a light switch that you have one light on two switches. It kind of works that way. All right, so battery life. 
It will do it automatically. It's not like the AVX system. If your battery is at 15% or so, it will blink red and then hold green. If your battery is linked and it's at 15%, it blinks red, green, red, hard green, solid. And then when it gets less than five, it starts going bonkers and just starts blinking red. It's different for each one. So here's the layout of how it is uh, locally, meaning if the device is not hooked up or linked, that's just blinking red. If it's linked, it's red on, off, hold, off, and then it looks weird. So here it is. That's what it is. But usually you are not going to get it that low most of the time. I say that, but you never know. Okay, next up, charging. I don't have it plugged in right now, but basically it is at 100% when it's solid green, when it's plugged in, USB-C. Blinking three green lights at 75. Between 5% and 75%, it's blinking three times with a yellow light, and less than 5%, it's blinking red three times. All right, so pairing. I haven't done this without it not being paired, so let's see what happens. According to the manual, you hold it for five seconds. Now, when that happens, it says it's going to blink green, then red, then it's going to pair. But the problem is if you turn, if you hold it too long, it's going to turn off. So be careful with that. And one last thing, if it's starting to get out of range, it starts blinking from red to green, like I said in the shed test. So with the XSW lab system, I definitely was surprised of how good the quality was. The major thing that stood out for me was the interference test, where I noticed, obviously, when I got a decent amount away, about 100 feet or so, in between a, me, the receiver was a shed and shed door and stuff like that, and it crackled in and out. That was the only negative thing that I noticed about it. And I will say only negative thing because there was a slight issue I had with the quality going into the Canon 90D, but I'm not gonna hold that against it because of the fact that the audio quality was really good going into the Zoom F6, which it is right now with the Rode adapter. And the Rode adapter isn't that expensive. So if you're spending money on this, I highly recommend getting that adapter, specifically that one. And links in the description, they're affiliate links, so I get a little bit of a kickback for that. It would be greatly appreciated. So going into each one with the studio, the audio quality, I will mention a little bit with the microphone. I'm not huge on the ME2. It's a it's like when you get a camera and you get the stock lens with it. It does the job, but it's not up to my standard. It's not like it's not, it doesn't sound just the way I want it to. And it's very difficult to get a sound that I want out of a lav. A lav is a sound that for some reason doesn't, doesn't vibe with me. It doesn't sound right. It gets the point across and maybe I'm just being nitpicky. I probably am. If you're a person who's nitpicky like me, let me know down in the comments. We'll talk about lav mics. Maybe there's one that's there's definitely one that is pretty close to like a natural sounding microphone. But as far as my experience with these, they're kind of eh. But moving on to the outdoors test, obviously a lot of crickets going on and a lot of crickets, just crickets everywhere. Uh, that was back a while, a while back. Uh, I don't remember when, probably in August uh, when I filmed that. And I definitely noticed that was the only issue I had with the background noise. Now, of course, you're going to deal with that background noise with any microphone, with a shotgun or whatever microphone you're using. So I'm not going to hold it against it too much, but it was very overwhelming, uh, especially when I wasn't talking and the background noise was crazy. So if you're using these microphones or this microphone specifically, know that that could be an issue. My main issue with it is the audio quality into the Canon 90D. Now, this could be the Canon 90D. This could be just any input into a camera. 
I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think it's that good of quality, at least compar comparatively speaking. It was serviceable. It could use some back end work. You could probably fix it up in post, but I was not really a fan of it. Again, this could be my audio background speaking, and this could be just me being a nitpicky person, but I was not a fan of it. But going into the Zoom F6, definitely, definitely good. And using those preamps as well. Something I didn't mention, and I apologize for that, but I'm not redoing it. So 24 and 48, that's what's the transfer from receiver from transmitter to receiver, just like the AVX system. If you watch that video, go check it out. And the comparison between the two is gonna come out soon. I'm gonna put some other videos out in between, and then I'll finally get to that because I don't have the time to really film uh, all that stuff right now at this present moment, but I have a lot of stuff filmed for other videos. So I wanna get those out first and then a comparison will be coming out soon. Hopefully in the next month or so. Now, the last thing I want to cover is who is this for? Now, at this price, this is like half the price of the AVX system. And I know I keep mentioning to it, mentioning that system, but it's a good comparison because of the price. The price is the major thing when you're considering these. And with the ease of use and everything like that, this is a little teaser for the comparison. I think that for quality and for the quality and the bang for your buck, the XSW system is much more uh, well worth it. You're getting a transmission and you're getting a microphone. And of course you could always get a different microphone if you'd like. Uh, I highly recommend getting a better microphone because I'm not a huge fan of the semi two, but I'm gonna get more in depth with that when I go into that comparison. So who is this for? I know I said that I prefer the XSW system, but it does have some interference issues occasionally, but for the bang for your buck. And now that I own the XSW and the AVX, I don't know which one I'm gonna use when and where. I think the XSW for my use case for client work for independent film stuff is a good backup, but the AVX is definitely more reliable and I never had a problem with it. The XSW, I don't have enough experience to say one way or another, but I definitely have noticed more issues as little as they may be, still more issues. But bang for your buck, XSW, very good. Now it's a little teaser for the comparison and if you're not interested in seeing that comparison, that's basically my take on the two. So check out the AVX video or check out the comparison after this if you haven't already. Uh, I'm gonna be getting that out as soon as possible, but like I said, I'm gonna be getting a bunch of other videos out because I already have them filmed and ready to go and I'm editing them as I am speaking right now to you. So that all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Helps this video, helps this channel. And uh, like I said, that, that adapter, that road adapter, if you want it, there's an affiliate link down below. It's not that expensive and I do get a kickback. So that'd be nice. It helps out the channel. Just like liking the video. Liking the video is free. Buying that costs you money, but you're getting a good adapter out of it. So also affiliate links for everything down below. AVX and XSW as well. Of course, if you have any comments, please leave them down in the comments section. If I missed something, which I probably did and if you have any questions about these systems, anything specific, or if you want me to cover something in the future, let me know down in the comments. Maybe I could throw it into the uh, comparison if you get it to me uh, closer to the release date, because this is probably gonna come out maybe like two weeks, maybe even three weeks most be, uh, before the comparison. So I could throw something in if you ask me. But if it's like a month or two after, then I'll just have to cover it in something else, or I try to answer it in the comments section. And the only rule is just be nice. That's all I ask. And one more thing. If you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing. Uh, we're, rel we're really close to 2000 subscribers uh, as of October 5th right now. 
uh, we are 20 away from 2000 and it's crazy to think that we got to a 2000 another thousand from last year in less than a year uh, so that's very cool I really appreciate it that's all I got for you until next time take care and I will see you rebels in the next video